millennium. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Mr. John Wetmore. Good evening, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it's not too late to wish all of you in the spirit of Chinese New Year, Gung Hai Fat Choi. What an exciting event. It's, uh, I'm absolutely delighted and certainly honored to represent IBM Canada here this evening and to sponsor, uh, in addition to being your keynote speaker, to sponsor the Best Turnaround Award. Chinese entrepreneurs play a key role in the economic growth, development, and job creation in Canada. And we're here this evening to celebrate your outstanding contributions, your success, your innovation, and most importantly to recognize the outstanding achievements of tonight's award winners. You've just heard that IBM is committed to supporting the Chinese businesses such as yours in supporting your efforts to incorporate technology into running your organizations. And of course, you heard about our home computing store in the Pacific Mall in Markham, which uh, where our staff is Cantonese and Mandarin, and uh, our Chinese technology hotline. We sponsored a lot of seminars and, of course, events like these. We have a lot of employees like Yang Hai, who you'll meet later, uh, who are working with you and other members of the community to ensure that your businesses are successful. And a key part of, of that is to get out and talk to many business people like yourselves, sharing our experiences about the incredible changes that are happening in the marketplace, driven by lots of things, by globalization and so on, but, but very importantly by technology. And so this evening what I'd like to talk about is some of those changes for the next millennium, millennium and the impact that they will have on the way that we all do business. And I'd like to really cover four areas. What's, what's happening uh, in this world? What, what is e-business all about? How do you get started? And what's the impact of some of this on society? First of all, what's happening? I'm sure that many of you are familiar with the internet, either because you use it or because you've seen the numerous articles that appear daily in newspapers, trade press, and television. There should be no doubt in any of our minds that the internet is radically reshaping how we live, work, and play. Today there are some 60 million people connected by the internet around the world. And by the turn of the century, these numbers are expected to grow into the hundreds of millions and possibly a billion connected users. According to a recent survey conducted around the world by a company called IDC Link, 18% of the Japanese households with PCs use them to access the internet. In the US that number is about 16%, Germany and Hong Kong are about 12%, and Taiwan about 10%. So what are all these people doing? Well, they're turning to the internet to do many of the things they do today, from banking to purchasing airline tickets to getting access to all kinds of information. And of course, the important thing is they're looking to do these things day or night, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, from wherever they happen to be in the world. I'm going to show you a short video that demonstrates to me just how much things have changed and maybe in ways how much things haven't changed. So let's take a look. I have no idea what this is. I can't do anything without the instructions. Nothing. They're just here. They're, they're, this is driving me nuts. It's okay. She'll get lots of other presents. We'll just hide this till her birthday. They were just here. They're right here. I just had them. She's been wanting this for a long time. I'd be so disappointed if I only had those instructions. 
I looked in there already. I already looked in there. Did you look in the box? I looked in there. Did I you take there. everything out of the box? I don't know where this thing is. Where could they be? Oh, here they are. Now, I, I don't know how many can uh, identify with that scene, but I can tell you that with three boys that there have been many Christmas Eves when I've been sitting in the living room trying to put that stuff together and hope there aren't too many parts left uh, when I get it done. So that's the part that hasn't changed. But what has changed is the fact that technology is there to make that job a little easier today. The exciting thing for me is the ability of our children to actually do that. The first place they want to go is to get on the computer to figure out where the instructions are. That's sort of the last place that my generation goes. So for kids, the technology is a natural. And for most adults, the transition hasn't been quite as easy. But it, it quite doesn't matter today what age you are. The internet has come to play an important part in our everyday lives. Of course, the evidence is all around us. Many of our job applicants in IBM Canada, and we've hired over 5,000 people the last couple of years, many of those job applicants have their own websites. Our children and their friends research most of their school projects today on the internet. And the elderly are discovering the internet as a way to connect to the world, to track their investments, to visit museums, to email their great-grandchildren around the world. Now, the recent Olympic Games in Nagano Japan is an excellent example of the dramatic increase in the number of people that are using the internet on a regular basis for information. And we were very proud to be able to put together the technology that supported the Olympics. And over that 16-day ev event, the internet site for the Olympics received nearly 650 million hits. That was more than three times the, the number of hits for the Atlanta games in, in just in 1996. And in fact, at the height of the women's figure skating, probably when Lu Chen was skating, the site sustained 103,000 hits per minute. People around the world interested in women's figure skating all at the same time. It really is mind-boggling. All told, our systems process some four terabytes of information at the Olympic Games. Now, that's more than the entire text that's printed in the U.S. Library of Congress, just in one sort of event globally. And I could go on. There's examples all around us. So with all this information that's available through the Internet, it should come as no surprise that the telecommunication networks, of course, are busiest now between 7 and 11 at night instead of during the business hours, which is the way it has been for, you know, the last hundred years. In Hong Kong, I know that the prime period for the Internet is between 6 p.m. and 12 a.m. in the morning. For the first time in history, there's more computer data traveling over these networks than voice traffic. And so for businesses like all of yours, it opens up, this opens up tremendous opportunities. And as a result of this phenomenal growth we've seen in the number of people using the Internet, of course, it's being mirrored by the growth in business usage. And of the more than 2 million new Internet users that arrive each month, 60% are from the business world. And over the next three years, the number of Canadian businesses that are expected to be using the Internet is some 4.4 million. And of course, the value of all the products and services that are exchanged worldwide between businesses over the Internet is expected to reach some $8 billion this year in 1998. That happens to be a 1,000% increase over last year. Now the real value or the hidden gold that is catching the attention of businesses and government leaders is this, the Internet's capability to radically reshape your entire business operations from the way you pay your bills, the way you communicate to your employees, the way you work with your suppliers and distribute products and services to your customers. This next video demonstrates a little bit of where we're heading in terms of a community and it's it's about a community called Cornell which is just down the street in Markham and it's being developed currently 
In fact, I just met somebody tonight that had just bought a home in Cornell. Let's take a look at the video. Own unique community intranet. You'll be able to shop from home, obtain important community information and services, join discussion groups, post classified ads, get information, trade information, ask questions, answer questions. And if you're a home-based business, there are extraordinary opportunities to more effectively reach new markets through the web. Without a doubt, electronic commerce is the way of the future. High-speed access also brings unprecedented opportunities for learning for both children and adults alike. For example, your children will be able to take collaborative, interactive courses and work with other children or teachers around the corner or around the world. Check out my water molecule. Uh, I think you mean carbon dioxide. Oh, sorry. The community intranet will enable you to consult with a doctor, nurse, or pharmacist right from your home. Home theater and home entertainment options stretch the imagination. High bandwidth access really does bring the world into your home. Movies, games, music, sports, and if it's out there, you're ready to bring it in. Bring your family and friends into your living room. And inside your home, IBM's Home Director software provides you with many home security and management options. Your house will not only be able to tell you just how much energy it's using, but also how to use it most economically. It can let you know at the office that your youngest child is home from school. Let's say you're working at home and the phone rings. Home control features could automatically turn down the volume of your TV or stereo, show you who's calling, and then return everything to the way it was before the call. If you're away, you can remotely control your home environment check on security, adjust the temperature, and turn lights on or off. It's all about choice. It's all about connecting. What seems inconceivable today will be routine tomorrow. Now, of course, we're all consumers, and, and this kind of Cornell community means tremendous access and a lot of added convenience for us. But as business people, I think it's also exciting that it prevents incredible opportunities and signals this shift that we'll continue to see happening as more and more businesses look to the internet to deliver their products and services. So that's in a way what we call e-business or electronic business. And that really brings me to the second point of my remarks is what is e-business? And I know many of you may have heard the term e-commerce and I would define that as buying and selling of products over the internet or using internet technology. But when I say e-business, it's really much broader than that. It's, it's about using internet-based technology to run all aspects of your business. And it, it's what happens when you combine you know, the technology systems that you have today, your PCs, your billing systems, your order systems, whatever it is. When you combine that with the simplicity and standards in this broad reach of the internet. And so this new interactive web plus the IT that infrastructure that you have is really what we call e-business. And of course, the uh, trademark e-business logo, which as you see on the screen, is what we're going to use in our advertising and, our, and uh, on customer websites. We have a lot of our customers that who we help put their websites together who've asked you know, to be able to indicate to their customers um, how secure and reliable the site is. And, and you know, we'll offer that logo. Now, for smaller businesses, the web really levels the playing field. And you have the ability to expand your businesses globally without having to invest in uh, bricks and mortar. And I'd like to share a few examples with you because they're absolutely fantastic. First of all, there's a company called PC Flowers and Gifts and it started out as a three-person firm offering gifts and flowers to its customers via the web. And during its first year of operation, this virtual organization went from a being about a number one, 800 in the US to the number two distributor of flowers in the United States, all through their operation on the web. Another company called Amazon.com is an online bookstore which grew from 340,000 to over 610,000 customers in just three months. They took, they really have changed the whole uh, book selling industry. Within the first three months of operation, it also had customers in some 26 countries around the world. 
One of the newest players in the book selling market is a company called Dragon Source, which is truly a, a virtual provider of Chinese books. And it opened its online store just a little over a month ago. The internet is also providing great, uh, great opportunities for communities in the far north of Canada, the Inuit, uh, to sell their crafts all of a sudden around the world. So if you sort of sit back and imagine the time and the cost and the effort that would have taken all these small businesses to establish themselves as global competitors using you know, a more traditional business uh, methods and having people over in Europe and Asia and everywhere else. You know, it would never have happened the way it is today. So the real message here is the world is changing. And you know, we have to sort of look at how our businesses can change with it. That the web is leveling the playing field. In many ways, it's tipping the balance of competition to those people that are willing to put the technology in and to add new capabilities. So while a great many smaller companies are internet enabled, the majority are really just getting started and using networking technology for their competitive advantage. And that's really the third area I wanted to talk about briefly, and that is how do you get started? Over the last couple of years, IBM and our business partners, many of whom are here tonight, have helped thousands of our customers make the move to e-business. And they've, we've learned a lot about what it takes to get started, and I'd just like to share a few lessons with you. The first is, this is about business, it's not about technology. And it's not about websites and flaming logos and lots of things. It means starting your business with your business goals and objectives. It means having a business strategy, and then applying the technology to help you get to where you want to go. There's a company called Lehigh Valley Safety Shoes. It was a very small company, about 20 people in, in Pennsylvania, and they started selling their safety shoes off the back of a truck. They sat down, they really wanted to grow their business, but they didn't want to travel all over the U.S., so they opened up a shop on the web, and their business has been very successful. In fact, the first order they received was from Indonesia. Again, the concept is they would never have dreamt they could be doing business around the world just through opening up an internet site. Now, the second lesson we've learned is to start simple and grow fast. And that's really the key to getting started. You know, you can launch a website and provide information about your company or your products. And, you know, you can even then provide potentially even a phone number or a fax number to have people order your products and then move that to more interactive capability. We just announced a service called the Homepage Creator to help small businesses like yourselves, you know, quickly and easily develop a website for as little as $60. And, and you sort of fill in an online template and you can create your own homepage in just a few hours. And that we're just one of, a, of, of many examples. There's many other companies that provide, uh, you know, equal services. The third lesson is that becoming an e-business requires a secure foundation. And it's really about trust. When you think about it, Trust is what you build your business on. Uh, you have great trust in your bankers, in your credit card suppliers. Uh, we have trust in the phone system. And so the, the consumers or customers that come to your website are going to want to have a lot of trust and confidence that you have a level of security built in your system. There's lots of technology available today to help you with security. There's firewalls, hardware and software. There's encryption technology to make sure that credit card numbers are secure. There's digital certificates to make sure you authenticate you know, who's sending the transaction. Lots of standards in place to ensure that there's no credit card fraud. And of course, the key is to make sure that this technology is put into the systems. And certainly, all of the Canadian banks today are, are investing in the technology to make these systems secure. The fourth lesson is that it takes a team to pull this together. And, Moving to an e-business is new for most companies, and I think there's, there's uh, many of us have gained a lot of experience and there's a lot of people around to help. Information technology suppliers are taking steps to make it easier for your businesses of all shapes and sizes to purchase technology and learn how to use it. We just announced a new service called the e-business advisor online where you can, you can go as a small business and get some advice on, on how you might be able to make your business you know, web ready. So this evening I've talked about many of the changes taking place in both our business and personal lives driven to a large extent by the internet. 
I've talked about e-business and I've shared some of the lessons that we've learned uh, as we've helped other businesses like yours become e-businesses. And before I finish, I'd like to spend just a few minutes on the impact of technology on society. As technology moves forward and we increasingly apply it to our businesses and our personal lives, it's going to be up to all of us to ensure that the world we are creating is one that, that is, you know, benefits all of mankind or all of society. And there's a wide range of issues that, that many people are talking about uh, that relate to the Internet. We've talked about secure, I mentioned security and privacy. There's other issues such as pornography and, and intellectual property theft and universal access and it goes on and on. But I just want to relay that I'm quite encouraged by the tremendous amount of activity that's underway you know, on all of these issues. Uh, from developing web information in multi-languages and national languages, I think that something like 30% of the content in French on the internet is generated out of the province of Quebec. There's a lot of filtering applications to ensure that our children um, you know, don't access inappropriate sites. There's lots of codes of conduct in place in the business world in the area of privacy. So as a result of this, what I think we're seeing is the creative and innovative use of technology to enrich people's lives. You know, when you think about the disabled and the tremendous opportunities that this technology opens up for them, empowering them to give them more personal and professional independence. If you think about our education system and the tremendous opportunities that it opens up for, for all students, no matter where you're located, no matter what your capabilities are, if we put the power to learn, you know, in their hands. If we think about the elderly, you know, many of whom are shut in today and who aren't mobile, and as they, they have this newfound freedom um, of technology and the Internet that it opens up for them. And of course, I think about lots of employment opportunities for our youth. I get really excited. I believe that this new emerging world has tremendous capacity to improve lives. It has a great ability to strengthen our economy and ensure that our children grow up in a world where their talents can be matched you know, to the opportunities that are there. It's very exciting for entrepreneurs. You know, you're really only limited by your imagination and your creativity today and how effective you can be, you know, as a web-enabled business. So I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. Uh, congratulations again to the organizers for the event tonight and certainly uh, congratulations to all the award winners. Thank you very, very much. Dao Jaya. Thank you, Mr. Wetmore. Mr. Johnson T is president of the Association of Chinese Canadian Entrepreneurs as a token to present to you. Mr. Johnson T, please. Thank you, Mr. Wetmore, for your enlightening speech.